fearless. That is the most dangerous quality in battle to have. In these goblins, fearlessness comes in droves. They consume their mushrooms, change their minds and outlook on battle, and then they come for us and lay a path of destruction. Hello folks, and welcome to Dice Chatter. My name is Donnie, and today we are going to make some mushrooms, rocks, and a wacky minecart ride for those fun little goblins called the Gloomspite Gits. If you are unfamiliar with these guys, they are featured in the tabletop wargame Age of Sigmar, and this video is a continuation of me attempting to build terrain for a number of Age of Sigmar armies. So if you folks have any ideas or builds, just let me know and I can see what I can do. So without further ado, let's head on over to the whiteboard. For these rampaging, high on their own supply goblins, I wanted to make something that was a little bit fantastical, and a little bit on the impossible. Well, at least in terms of minecart physics. I imagine these little dudes living deep in the earth somewhere, ingesting mushrooms and having fun riding some roller-type coaster carts. Maybe these were old dwarven minecarts that have been repurposed for pleasure. Or maybe these goblins have a big interest in state fairs and want to experience the thrills in cinnamony elephant ears 24-7. Either way, this build will pull in ideas from other builds I've done and try out some new techniques as well. Get out of here, foam. It's not time for you yet. We need to decide what base to use today. Just like my last build, I decided to go with a peel and stick vinyl tile once again. It's cheap, easy to cut, and is generally sturdy enough for smaller terrain pieces. So it should work out great for what we are working on here today. I just like to make sure the sticky side is smooth and ready to use for whatever foam I decide to lay down in a later step. While that is set to dry, I had to really figure out the scale of this piece and how it would function on the tabletop, especially the mushroom caps. I wanted big ones, but nothing superimposing or overpowering in the build. There are a number of focal points I want the eye to be drawn to in this creation, but I don't want the mushrooms to be the main topic. Also, I have never made mushrooms before, so this entire process was entirely experimental, and I just went for it. I decided to start with the stalks of the mushrooms. I went around the house and found some old toilet paper and paper towel rolls. I went ahead and ripped them apart and soaked them in water for a moment. I didn't really know what this was going to accomplish and realized not much. I needed some adhesion to get things in a decent shape. I pulled out the Mod Podge once again and rolled up some cardboard joints. I took some time and made sure everything had some glue on it. The problem with this is the cardboard still didn't fill out to the shape I wanted, so I added a layer of paper towel over our joints. I soaked the paper in a water Mod Podge mix and then layered it over the cardboard rolls. Not going to lie, if I was to do this again, I would probably try a different product or technique to try and create these mushroom stalks. The end result shows the details in the paper towel too much, and overall I wasn't a huge fan of how it looked in the end. But you have to experiment to see what you like and don't like. Maybe next time I'll try some sculpting. While our cardboard joints dry and seal up, we plan out how this minecart roller coaster is going to look. We play around for a moment and then start doing some rough outlines on the vinyl tile. Once we have a general plan laid out, we cut it out and start shaving away at some foam. I'm using some leftover expanding foam I had from my Skaven build and attempted to make some rocks and imaginary launch pads for our loop-de-loop. -loop. Now I won't go into detail on knife blades and foam cutting, I've done this in a series of other videos and I think you generally all know what to do. So after a long while of chipping, scraping, peeling and cutting, I use some hot glue to adhere everything to the base and move on to the next step. This is of course before I look deep into your soul. Yes, you, the one viewing this video, I know what you did. Anyways, here is the basic outline and plan set up on the table. I wanted to do a few different pieces so I could spread it out all around the table. Maybe use it in some more cry. Oh, and of course, it would not be a dice chatter terrain build if we did not use some drywall compound to make our rocks look extra rocky. Just like the phone shaping and cutting step, I don't need to go into too much detail here. Make a mess of things and have fun. You really can't go wrong slapping spackle on some foam. 
Just add a little water to the mix if it's going on a little too thick for your liking, but this step should be fun and easy to do. Make sure to let that dry before we move on to the black Mod Podge step to give our rocks another coat in the sealing process. I will assume you all know what is going to happen here, and I will do some super speedy fast motion editing. While this seals and dries, we'll move back on over to the mushrooms. So we have some fat doobies rolled up, but as you can tell, they are a little flexible for my taste. So just like the rocks, we do another coat of Mod Podge over the mushroom stalks. We give that time to seal up, and then we have to decide how we are going to make some mushroom caps. I had a tough time looking for things to use around the house or coming up with a decent idea, so I went back to the tried and true foam method and cut them into a series of mushroom cap shapes. Some I made smaller, others flatter, and another taller. I figured mixing up the look of these guys would add more interest into the build and have it stand out. Similar to what I mentioned earlier about the stalks, the foam mushroom caps probably wouldn't be my first go-to if I tried this again. I think for some mushroom styles this would work out great, but the foam ones make everything have very similar textures, which is not necessarily ideal for me. Also off camera, I did some black Mod Podge over the foam caps to seal it in once again and get it ready for painting in a few moments. But right before we get to that step, I do one final thing before I spray everything down with a coat of black spray can primer. And that is the gravel and sand texture. I go around the base edges and some of the rocks and place watered down PVA glue. Following this, we just sprinkle on our rock mixture and let that harden. This is just another step I like to do with any rock or boulder build. It is simple, easy to do, and really picks up some dry brushing highlights when we hit that with the painting step which is finally next. This is where we finally start seeing everything come together. All that hard work and construction will finally pay off as we start to see our project come alive. As I have covered in other videos, I stick to a generally simple paint scheme for my rocks working from a dark gray to a lighter gray, and then a white dry brush to make those extra details pop. I also take some other colors, oranges, browns, and tans, and splash them in here and there to add more coloration and detail. And let's not forget about some watered down inks. You can see this better in some of the finished shots, but some green and brown inks can really add a deep underground slimy corroded water effects on the stones. It is super easy to do and looks awesome in the end. Just make sure to blend it back in with a little dry brushing of lighter colors in the end to get rid of any pesky streak lines. With the rocks complete and looking great, we move on to the mushrooms. The mushrooms I feel this entire project, I had no idea what I was doing, so I just did the same when painting them. I messed around with colors, inks, dry brushing, mixing, also different painting techniques, and I had fun with them. A lot of it doesn't make sense or look like real life mushrooms, but this is also for a tabletop war game based on medieval otherworldly fantasy so things not looking exactly realistic is quite alright. In the end, I just wanted all of them to look different from each other, and I believe I did that quite well. Once this was complete, I simply just hot glue some of the shrooms to the rocky bases, and we move on to our final piece of the build, the track for the minecarts. The first item I used for the track was some little wooden sticks that I went ahead and used as the rail ties. I took these wooden sticks and measured them up to the terrain pieces I wanted to lay some track down on and determined that I could just snap these little guys in half and have the perfect size. But I didn't want the rail ties to look like basic manufactured wood so I had some brown wash I made a little while back and soaked the wood in the container for a few seconds. I also later went back and put some of the sticks in a black wash as well to add a bit more variety. This process was quick and honestly looked way better than I expected. The rails themselves, I used some EVA foam that was about 2 millimeters thick and cut it into thin strips. I wanted to try something flexible so I could make nice big loop-de-loops and also something that would take paint primer as well. As I am painting and assembling the rail lines, I will discuss a little bit of what I learned after using the product. EVA foam is fantastic and fits the bill for a number of builds and I can see myself making a number of buildings and terrain pieces using this material. But when you cut it into super thin strips, it flexes and bends, sometimes not to your liking. Unfortunately, I didn't really think of this and once I started to make the rail loop and place the wooden rail ties down, it started to weigh down the foam and create an oddly shaped loop. 
For a terrain piece like this, I can easily get past this flaw, but I wanted you to be aware of this if you tried it out yourself. Overall, the rail turned out quite well and I'm super happy with the finished product. So there you have it folks, a little bit of goblin railway and mushroom antics. This build was a challenge for me. I wanted to try out supplies I had on hand for this build and restricted myself to stuff I already had in the craft bin. And with that in mind, it turned out better than expected. On the other hand, if I was to try this again, I may have chosen a different material for the rails or tried out some sculpting for the mushrooms. But I am happy to have this new terrain piece on the table and use it for many years to come. If you all enjoy this video, be sure to do all the socials and check out the Patreon. Also, if you have any build ideas for some Age of Sigmar armies, shoot them my way and I'll see what I can conjure up. Until next time, folks, I want to thank you all for watching, and of course, happy gaming.